Welcome back. So today I've got something really special for you. This will be the first video of 2023 and we are going to start it off with a bang. So we are going to look at this Lionel Vision Line Pennsylvania Railroad Class A. So if you're seeing this video, you've probably seen plenty of other videos on the Lionel Vision Line Class A. And I've had a great time watching those videos. If you haven't checked them out, I would encourage you to do so. I thought I'd talk a little bit about why I decided to get this engine. So we know that the Class A was going to be part of the 2022 Volume 1 catalog. And of course it was uh, because Lionel had announced it at the prior York. But what we didn't know is what road names and what variations were going to come with that. So... This is a custom run done by Mr. Muffins. It is one of 50 that were produced. And I had initially passed on the Class A because it just wasn't really something that I, I really needed or, or really, you know, had a lot of interest in. Um, I don't really do too much NW Steam, although I do have a, a, a Lion Master version around here somewhere. But, you know, when I learned about the history of the, the Pennsylvania Railroad, almost adopted these Class A's instead of what later became the J1A. Um, I decided to jump on it and especially knowing that only 50 of these were going to be made. I knew they were going to be really hard to find later on. Um, and I'm really glad I did. Lionel did a really great job with this one. You know, there was a couple things that I think could be better and we'll talk about that here. Uh, but there are a lot of things that are really terrific with it and make it stand out. So let's go through some of that stuff. All right, so we are going to go through kind of three different areas for this engine. We're going to go through appearance, so what it looks like, features, and of course, sounds. That's my personal favorite. So you can see here from the appearance, we have a ton of add-on detail. This is new tooling from Lionel. Um, we've got builder's plates here. They went through the trouble of putting the keystone on the front, and of course it has the uh, Brunswick green paint job. Front pilot swings open here. So we've got a scale coupler in there and I believe that can be replaced with a dummy coupler. This is really great tooling from Lionel. Um, definitely, you know, everything you would expect from a vision line engine. Like I said, a ton of add on detail here. These open and close. The, this is not a swinging bell. Um, but you know, the bell does move as you would expect, and then controls are under here as always. We have a real coal load. It's a really nice coal load. Well, something that I think maybe a first for this, and you'll see when I run it around, is the uh, doghouse back here has a figure and a light in there. So peeking in the cab here, we have crew figures, and then a really nice back head can see there we've got gauges um, all painted up quite a bit of detail in there so that looks really good yeah the deck plate here is somewhat fixed um, and you know it's a little high but to me that's a, a kind of a pro because I I like how it stays up by itself so when you're trying to connect the engine and the tender here you know on some of my MTH engines or other engines you know, you're trying to do this with, with two hands, and even still, it's hard to keep the deck plate up and still get the engine and tender attached. So. so let's talk about the one thing that could be a little bit better, in my opinion, and that is the paint. And there's two aspects to this. One is the Tuscan red on the cab roof and on the tender, and the other is the green. So you can see here I've got two other legacy engines, both by Lionel, for comparison. So this is a J1A from a couple years ago and a uh, M1B from maybe 10, 15 years ago. Now, you'll notice some differences in the color. So uh, Pennsylvania Brunswick green was, from what I understand, nine parts black and one part whatever green they could find in the shop. Now, in my opinion, this green is at least one shade, maybe two or three, too light. Um, every other Pennsylvania steam engine that I have is much darker. You know, these two are definitely on the darker side, but from what I understand are the most prototypically correct. It's not a deal breaker for me. Do I wish the green was darker and more prototypical? Yes. Now, the other aspect to this is the Tuscan red. So 
you can see this is really red. Now, this is a little bit bigger deal to me personally than the green. Um, this is like fireball Western Maryland red. Um, it does look different in different lightings, and so does the green. I'll, I'll definitely say that. But you can see here, this is maybe this is right, maybe this is wrong, but this is what they've used on a couple different engines in the past. It's a little disappointing um, for me personally. I would still buy the engine again uh, for some of the reasons that I'm going to talk about here. So we talked about appearance of the engine. And overall for me, that's probably a 7 out of 10. Next, let's talk about features for the engine. So this engine is jam-packed with everything you would want from a legacy engine. You know, maybe the only exception is it doesn't have swinging bell. I don't know if uh, you know, swinging bell was prototypical to the class A's or not. But otherwise, it is awesome from a feature perspective. And there's a lot of features in this engine that are new to me. One of uh, the other deciding factors was that this engine has what Lionel calls stereophonic rail sounds. And I have that in my big boy, and it is just a whole other level of sounds. So what that means is that there are speakers here in the engine and speakers in the tender. So that's kind of the echo sound that you hear there. So that's awesome. You can see as well here, the doghouse lit up as I mentioned earlier. And let's turn these smoke units on all the way. So you can see some of the awesome smoke features this has. So this engine features stack smoke, whistle smoke and pop off smoke. This engine has two independent smoke units. So that's not something that you typically see. And because of that, just the smoke volume and output is really, really impressive. This thing will smoke you out. So let me show you what this whistle smoke looks like here. Pretty standard. Really nice, good puffs there. And pop-off smoke, so this can be activated with the AUX-3 key. And one of the other features with this engine that's new to me is the coupler slack sounds and uh, the sensor that is in the coupler. So as you're pulling, if you have, if you're going up a grade or you have a heavy train, uh, the labor will increase on the chuff. But also, uh, you know, say you're switching or you're connecting this engine to some cars, if you bump it a little bit, you get a coupler slack, you know, kind of coupler slack or coupler close sound. So we talked about the features. For me, that's a 10 out of 10. Those features are so much fun and make running this engine that much more enjoyable. But now let's listen to some of the sounds. And that is far and away my favorite part of this engine. Uh, Lionel really went above and beyond. It has 3701 Pennsylvania Railroad cab and, and railroad specific crew talk. I did not expect them to do that since this is a custom run engine and they were only gonna sell 50 of these, but they did it anyway. It has Pensy whistles in here and it just makes running this engine so much more enjoyable. So this is the whistle I've been using the most. This is ironically the Hooter. Um, and so this is probably not what, what this engine would have used if it were a Pennsylvania Railroad. But to me, this is number one, closely followed uh, by the, what is the Mountain or M1A, M1B uh, whistle that's also in here. This one sounds like maybe it's a Challenger whistle that they've, you know, adjusted the pitch on or something. Another Hooter. This is a good one as well. Banshee. So this is obviously a, a PRR whistle. Not a huge Banshee, Banshee whistle person myself. Um, still trying to figure out how to swap the whistle on my J1A, but... And then this is my number two favorite here. Uh, 
this whistle is in some of my other legacy Pensy engines and can't get enough of this one. So let's do the bells. There you go. Now the chuff in this engine is really deep. Uh, it almost sounds like the big boy chuff. This to me is what a steam engine should sound like when it's chuffing. Ready to pull. 